We're going to be setting up our quiz application where we've got the structure of the quiz within a spreadsheet. So we've got the question, correct answer, and some other possible answers. So this is all flexible and dynamic. So you can add up to four answers here. And then if you needed more than four, you can adjust that within the script. Uh, so any of one of these answers, as we change them, they're going to change within the output of the JSON. The JSON output just looks like this. And this is going to be the endpoint content that we're connecting to. And this is within a JSON format, which we can use as the endpoint from our JavaScript code to pull that in for, to our web application. And this is the Google Apps script that we're using in order to first construct the output content. And then using the doGet method, which creates the content for the web app. And in this case, we're creating using content service to output it as a meme type of JSON so that we can make a fetch request and get back the JSON data. So we're stringifying the contents of the output data and then outputting it into the web app. So you can see whenever we run the output data, we're constructing that content and then returning the data. And that data is being returned as the output within the endpoint. And within the front end code, we're loading the data from the spreadsheet as an object within an array and outputting it right now within the console. And then lastly, we're going to be taking that and creating a quiz application out of that. This lesson, we're going to be setting up the quiz project so that you're going to need an editor and the editor that I'm using is Visual Studio Code. I've already set up an index.html file with typical HTML tags. So we've got the HTML, the head, the body. I've got a div within those tags that's got a class of output. So this is going to be where our main container is that we're going to be selecting with the JavaScript code and manipulating the content within output with JavaScript code. We're linked to a script file called app2.js and app2.js currently right now is just empty. And this is where we're going to be writing the JavaScript code in order to make things happen. I've got the browser window opened on the right hand side using the Chrome browser and dev tools within the browser. So that's open on the bottom hand side of the page. So anything that we write with the JavaScript, we're going to be able to see within the console. And this is perfect for when we're debugging our application. And then also if we make any updates to the HTML code, we're going to also see that within the browser window on the right hand side. So we can see within real time as we're updating and creating the code, what we've got within the results within the development environment of our web application. So alternatively as well, you are going to need to have a Google account. So I've already created and logged into my Google account. Uh, so that's going to be the Google account that I'm using. I've created a spreadsheet. And within the spreadsheet, I'm going to be just be using a separate sheet. I'll call it quiz. And this is where all the quiz questions are going to go for this exercise. And we're going to be connecting to this spreadsheet using the sheet quiz using a Google Apps Script web app. So in order to set that up, and this is going to be a standalone app. So going over to script.google.com forward slash home, this is where you can create your Google Apps Script. I have the screen zoomed in to 200%. That's why it's quite large. And this is for the recording purposes of this lesson so that it is easier to read the content on the screen. So going into the app script, you can create a new project. And again, this is going to be a standalone script connecting to that spreadsheet. So completely separate project. And we're going to be launching the web app within this project. So select from the scripts, creating a new project. And I'm going to call this one JS quiz app and just rename it. And this is where we can write our Google script code and set up our web app to output the contents that we have within the spreadsheet. So let's set up some of the content in the spreadsheet. And the first row in the spreadsheet, I'm going to use as the heading. And I'll just zoom in so that we can see the columns a little bit better. So for the quiz, we're going to need a question. And this is going to be the correct answer. And then we can have a number of answers after that. So answer one, answer two, 
answer three, and answer four. So, so there could be up to four different possible answers that we have for the question. Uh, so let's, what color is the sky? And we don't need the question mark. We'll add that in with the formatting. So the correct answer is going to be blue. Uh, possible answers are red, green, and purple. And then uh, next one, what color is the grass? And of course, you can make your own questions. Uh, this is just for uh, testing purposes while we're setting up the app. So we're going to make it dynamic. So it doesn't matter how many questions we add, how many possible answers there are. We're going to be running through them and loading them all within the code. Uh, so a possible answer that uh, the first answer that we have is going to be blue and pink, orange. And let's add in one more and just do the purple for that. And let's uh, do what is five plus seven. So the answer of that is 12. And let's uh, add in some random numbers there. So that gives us a good selection of possible questions. We've got the correct answer within the second column, and then some other possible answers within the other column. So up to four different answers that we can have within the multiple choice of the question. So let's open up the app script and connect to that sheet data. And we'll construct our JSON output within the app script. I'll just make this larger so that it's easier to see. So this is our function that's going to be outputting the data. So just call it output data. And within here, we're going to have an ID. So connecting to the sheet using its ID. And then let's uh, get the sheet data. And we're going to do this all within the one statement. So using the spreadsheet app, we're going to open by ID using the ID that we just set up in the string. And then get the, we're going to get the sheet by name. So there's a few options there. Uh, so the name of the sheet is going to correspond with the name of the sheet. So we just called it quiz. So selecting the sheet quiz. We're going to get all the data. So just using get data range. So it's going to select the range. And then the last part is where we want to get the values. So it's going to return back the values from the spreadsheet. Uh, let's make sure that everything is correct with the sheet data. So this should give us an array of all the sheet data when we run the function. First time we run it, it's going to ask for permissions. So let's go ahead and get the permissions set up and then make sure that we're getting the data properly within an array from the spreadsheet. So that way we can prep for our output within the Google scripts. So review the permissions, select the account that you want to use, and then access the permissions that you want to set to the app and just allow those permissions. So that way we should get the output of the content of the spreadsheet, which we have there. So we want to loop through the content that we have and we have a set structure and we don't want to change the structure where we've got a question, a correct, and then some possible options for answers. So let's uh, construct that and create that within an object format and keeping that structure the same. We're not, we don't need to take the headings because we know which headings that we're looking for. So that first column is going to be the question. The second column is the correct answer. And then the next columns are just going to be the array that we're going to be constructing. So let's create that out of the data that we currently have. And we want to get back all of the rows of content. So create another variable, call it rows. And then using the sheet data, we're going to use slice to slice back the all of the rows of content. So this is only going to include the rows of content. And it's not going to include the first column anymore or first row anymore. So we've got the questions and then all of the possible answers there. So that means that we are able to loop through those rows and construct the data that we want to use for the output. So we can use the map method in order to build the data that we want. So using rows and then map the contents of the row. And let's output that data value. 
So what do we want to clap for the row? So that we've got the row of data. And then we want to return back the, the row contents. So right now, we'll just return back the row contents. So this shouldn't change anything. We should still have all the same data within the data object. So what we want to do is want to clean this up a bit and create a function that's going to turn it into an object format. So let's create the object. So right now we can just start it with a blank object. And then ultimately what we're going to be doing is returning the object contents. And for the rows, we know that the first row of data is going to be the question value. So we can actually, or the first column of data is going to be the question. So we can actually structure it already. So we've got the question and then cola separate it. So name paired values. So we've got the name and then the value that we want associated with it. And the value is going to be coming from row zero. So let's uh, run the content. And that gives us the value of question within the object format. And let's uh, copy, copy and set it up and row. The first item with index value of one is going to be the correct answer. So it's going to be the question and the answer, again, within an object format. And then the last part is we want to loop through the remaining rows and check to see the values of those remaining rows. So we could potentially have up to four additional rows. So we can create a loop with let i equal zero. And if you have more than uh, the four potential answers, you can set up additional values as needed. And we loop through while i is less than the value of four, and then increment i by one. So we want to get back all of the responses. So log or log, and selecting the row with the index value of i. And we're going to have to make an adjustment to this. So we won't want this actually to start at row number two, and then return back when it's less than six. So let's just make sure that we've got values for all of those. So we're able to put all of those values in. So it's just returning back the value. And we want to make sure that the value is equal to something. So let's set up a variable, we'll just call it val. And that's going to reference the value that we've got within row one. And here we're going to set up an array within the object, which so my object and array. And this is just going to be a blank array for now. So we'll check to see if val and length is greater than zero. And if it is, then we're going to take the my object array and we'll push the value into the array. So that should give us an array of only the values that have values as possible answers. So let's see what this looks like. So let's run it. And that's going to return back an array of all of the options. And we also want to include, so this one actually ended up with a blank array. So we need to take a look and see what happened there, why we didn't get the answers in there. And that's because the length was not long enough. So we didn't have an actual length there. So let's uh, just make sure that there is a value there. And we'll try to run that again and see if we get the answers there. So we did get them this time. Everything looks correct. We don't have any blank items there as possible answers. And we actually need to start this at index one. And the reason is because we want to include the correct answers in that array of options so that we can randomize the order of the options and match it against whatever the correct answer is. So that will give us an array of options that we're presenting. And whenever the user makes the selection, then we can check it against whatever the correct answer is. So that builds up the array that we want to return. Uh, so instead of logging it, we'll just return back the value of the data that we've constructed. And now we're ready to move on to the next part where we can do the output. So that's the function do get method. And we're going to request and output the content. So create an object. And using the JSON stringify method, 
we want to stringify the results. And this can be an object format as well. So typically I like to include the status. Now you don't always have to, but it's good that um, you can look for the status before you try to loop through the contents. And then the data that's going to be contained here, this is just coming from the output data. And then within the web app, we want to return using the content service. We're creating the text output and the output content is coming from output and setting the meme type. Let's set the meme type as content service meme type and the meme type that we're expecting is going to be JSON meme type. So that sets up our web app to output the data object that we're creating within the output data function. So we're ready to do a new deployment. And you can, before you do the deployment, you can do a test deployment and set up a web app. And we need to deploy the project as well. So let's select the web app. And this can be quiz one. We're executing the web app as my Google account and then opening it up to anyone so that we can easily make the Ajax request from the front end code. And we don't have to accept any permissions in order to do that. So this is just opening up an endpoint to this URL. So that's outputting the data. So now you can copy that URL and go into your code and we'll paste it within the app to JS and we'll just call it URL. So that's our endpoint URL. And we're also going to select the output content within the JavaScript and that's using the document query selector select the element with a class of output. And then we'll add a event listener to the document, add event listener. So this is going to be called DOM content loaded. And this is just to make sure that the DOM content has loaded. So it's going to trigger an event, run a function INIT. Let's uh, set up that function INIT. And then I'll add the ready, the console log ready within that function and save it. So that should give us that output. Uh, we still have the hello there. So let's get rid of that. And now we're ready to make the fetch request to this endpoint URL and then retrieve the contents back into our web application. So let's uh, do that. We're making the fetch request to the URL. Once we get the response back, then we're going to be returning the response as a JSON object. And then once we get the JSON, the next item in the promises, so making it a little bit easier to read. Then once we've got the promised content back, retrieve it back as data, and we'll log it into the console. So this is gonna get all of the content that we have from the spreadsheet and prepare us to be able to use that within the web application. And then building the web application is gonna be the next step in this project. So go ahead and set up your spreadsheet. Add some questions within the same type of structure. You can add more answers if you want. And then make the output within the code so that you can structure the data as an object that's going to be usable within the JavaScript code. Output it as JSON in your web application that's going to be constructing the endpoint. And then you can use that endpoint within the JavaScript code to make a connection to that endpoint and pull the data in to your console. And that's going to be ready to use and to construct your quiz application in the next part of this, of, of this lesson.